Welcome to Fast Effect Double Speed Magic the Gathering. Here we have the finals of a FNM, I believe. It's going to be self squaring off against uh, actually Michael on Comic. These marquees are all messed up. I'm on Cephalid Breakfast on the right side of your screen, and Michael's playing Comet Control or Jess Guy. Just given the finisher of the deck, Comet Stellar Pup. A little bit of extra respect as that card closes out games. It was not obvious to people that it was going to be a legacy playable card. It certainly is. It actually ends the game, and there's a lot of redundancy in its modes. Three possibilities are all good. They all kind of do a similar thing in many situations. Making squirrels often muddies up the board. And doing direct damage will often kill your opponent's best threat. Also doesn't target, which is absolutely disgusting. And on top of it, we have ability to get back Prismatic Ending or Swords to Plowshares from the graveyard, which also gets rid of an opposing creature. So a lot of cards to contend with on the other side here prismatic ending dress down force and negation all of those can interact on some level dress down a dangerous card try and move all in get blown out by the dress down that'll stop fast as oracles eb trigger he's undoing in there to combo with narset Totally reload the hand and opponent with absolutely nothing. Especially when combined with Tefiri and playing it on your opponent's turn. Really how you draw it up. A lot of basic lands. This Jeskai list. Another one. Dress down is known. Can't really go for it. Dress down and force of negation backup. Orm's chant type of thing that you're kind of hoping for. Force the dress down to be played. And to Fury, this card is horrific right now. Got a hand with a couple of dazes in it that is not going to be able to stop this three mana planeswalker. And what's worse is once he lands, those dazes are going to be total bricks in hand. So this is the perfect card for the situation at the perfect time. Two mana to pay for both dazes if need be. And Tefiri shows up and bounces that Urza's Saga as he's so good at doing. Comes back down, but Tefiri just ticking up. And now Narset things... Going from bad to worse. Our set finds a brainstorm. A fine card will do me zero good on my side of the table with that Narset play. This is sitting there. Terrible. Still a dangerous situation, though. Orm's Champ being fired off. Ooh, minor misstep. It's so good. Hoping to draw that Force and Negation out of hand. I don't think I actually could have won on that turn. Narset digs again. Finds another Narset. These Planeswalkers play so well together. So she replaces her one loyalty self with a fresh five counters. Legend Rule puts one of them into the bin. Go have an Urza Saga body. That can be used for Cabal Therapy. It looks like the Thassa's Oracle is actually in hand, which is extremely unfortunate. Also, no brainstorms to put it back into the library. Now the combo going to be even more clunky in game one. 
I need five total mana to complete it. Well, I guess that's not entirely accurate. There is this Shuko. I was dressed down. Clears the construct. Has no abilities. So they zero zero and dies a state based effect. Ponder. Things are desperate enough that this is a ponder just to reorder the top three of the library. Nomad and an Orm's Chant. Those are quality cards in terms of pulling the combo together, but when there's still that prismatic ending that we know about, Fury's going to allow that to be fired off at instant speed. A little bit of a question of whether or not it would be best to scoop and leave enough time for game two and three. Tournament management, really a skill set that's not talked about, I would say, nearly enough. Oh no, Comet goes up, rolls a six right away. There's all the text on that one. Yeah, and all sorts of squirrels. Four hasty damage. I mean, he closes out games quite quickly. As that loyalty ticks up, when you do hit the three, it's just an insane amount of damage out of nowhere. A one in six shot of hitting ten extra damage next turn. Combined with that fetch land, that's literally just lethal. Crack that fetch. I may just be dead next turn. Prismatic ending does exile, so I don't even have the ability to play this Thassa's Oracle and sacrifice it to Cabal Therapy. That would be actually the preferred play in this situation would be to play a body, flashback Cabal Therapy, try and create some type of counterplay. Instead, Orm's Chance being fired off. Already removal for this. Force of Negation finally drawn out of the hand. Look at all of those counters. Normally be pretty happy with the situation. Instead, just slowly, or quickly being mangled. I was going to say slowly strangled, but this is more like a dog falling. Five. Oh, I got that backwards. A four or five does the uh, damage. The three is the one that returns the, the card that costs two or less. Sorry, there's a lot of modes on there. Uh, they are all quite bad for your opponent. But yeah, it was actually a one in three chance of just getting KO'd by the Stellar Pup. I mean, what a ridiculous magic card. A pretty violent game number one. Still plenty of time on the clock. Three games. You know, breakfast, probably in this matchup, optimal tournament strategy. I'd probably be happy starting the last game with, you know, just a few minutes, maybe five minutes. Breakfast can definitely win in that frame. Typical control decks are going to have a tough time doing that. Though, as we saw, Comet can actually win pretty quickly. But you don't have that much access to Comet. That's, that's the reality. It's, while Comet does close things out, the deck has just a lot of card drawing to eventually find your win condition when you're ready to win. And uh, speaking of which, this is just exactly how you draw it up. Cephalid and... Just kind of doing the thing. Cephalid getting targeted by Nomad. Milling, finding Narcomoeba. It was a attempt on a force of negation to stop a Cabal therapy. It is all in here. Dread return. Got the surgical. And I've got the force of will. So 
That is the power of Cephalid Breakfast right there. That's how you draw it up. Combo on turn two through your opponent's force and surgical extraction. Can't complain about that one at all. Well, on the other side of the table, you certainly can. A couple of violent games there. Michael and I have had a few sets uh, with these types of decks very often. It uh, is a mauling in one of those games, a quick combo on one of them, and then one of the games ends up being a comical farce of beating him down with 1-1 one -one creatures, sometimes even getting there with them. Let's see how this one plays out. Nomads and Cephalid certainly caused probably more damage versus Michael than anyone else frequents this store. A brainstorm. Nomad's so good as a combo piece. I'm up to four copies of it. Shuko is considerably worse as it opens you up to all sorts of removal. Swords the Plowshares does, in fact, get rid of the Nomads. Oh, Shuko obviously can't be removed with most creature removal. Prismatic Ending will handle creatures or a Shuko. So there's something to be said for getting the Shuko out and then resolving an Orm's Chant in terms of mana efficiency, but just in general, having the Nomads is incredibly good versus your opponent's responses. They have to use it on the Nomads, leaving your Cephalid around. Whereas if you try and combo off using Shuko with the Cephalid, they're just going to kill the Cephalid and Start over. This match actually got me thinking about some other cards that I want to try out in the list. I might actually experiment with Unearth or Reanimate. Probably Unearth. The ability to get back a combo piece or even a opposing, or, or even a Thassa's Oracle. Uh, and then also interested in trying out Mystic Sanctuary. For sure, the, the card that I'm most interested in for my sideboard, though, is going to be Mystical Dispute. Or Mystic Dispute? The counter, a blue spell for three for only one blue. I mean, hitting Planeswalkers like Narset and Tefiri would be so much better. It also gets around Minor Misstep. Right back to the horrible board state of game number one, facing down a pair of Planeswalkers, War of the Spark, really changing the face of Legacy with these efficient Planeswalkers. Such a different dynamic than like a Jace the Mind Sculptor, where it's in condition. You're incredibly happy to find early and often. And Minor Misstep is just running right into our orange chance running right into minor misstep and it's going to be cephalid plus nomad four cards in hand he has to have it and he does he's got the pyroblast to hit that cephalid Tapping with six mana. Oh, cycle step through. Going for it here again. I went for it last turn. That was stopped. With a pair of counters. Going again. Does he still have any type of interaction left? Five mana. Hard cast force. Oh, hard cast force. Swinging at the Narset with the Nomads. Looks like that. That Exiles? Actually see what happened to the Nomads. 
Oh, and scooping it up here. So force brainstorm. Force completely stopped by the Teferi. Brainstorm by the Narset. Oh, and a couple of Urza's sagas coming up. Ah, I feel bad about that. So it looks like I probably could have struggled for another 5-10 minutes with those Urza's sagas. I don't know, maybe... Is that even a 5% chance to win that game under Humility? I mean, it's four bodies. The Shuko does make them bigger. Uh, but that seems... Seems like it's a tough one. Yeah, let me know what percentage you think I could possibly steal there with double Urza's Saga coming off the top. Those are literally the two best cards that I could have seen off the top there. Thank you for watching. For more magic from ELD's Time Vault games, be sure to subscribe and check out more videos just for you over here.